ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at lesson 6.3. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that quadrilaterals are parallelograms. So that's our goal, to show which quadrilaterals are parallelograms. We looked at properties of parallelograms um, in lesson 6.2. And so now we're going to work on recognizing um, some more properties and using those properties. So let's take a look at what today's lesson is going to look like. We're going to start off with the theorem. Once again, I want to tell you it's not so much that it's theorem 6.6. .6. There's nothing magical about that number. What it is is we want to take a look at what are they telling us in this um, theorem. So what the words mean is if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Let's try that again. I'm going to snap up. Our parallelogram. All right, so um, we see this oftentimes. We talk about special things like, oh, rectangles have opposite sides that are equal. Squares have opposite sides that are equal. But there's other things we need to know about a rectangle or a square. So the first thing I can start with, if I know opposite sides are congruent, if opposite sides are equal, then it's a parallelogram. So what that means in symbols is if PQ is congruent to SR and QR is congruent to PS, so we see our congruency marks here, then PQRS is a quadrilateral, I'm sorry, it is a quadrilateral, it's a parallelogram. Alright, so that's what we're looking at, trying to identify which things are parallelograms. They now throw another property at us, this theorem 6.7. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, so we have opposite angles congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. A parallelogram, ladies and gentlemen, is this beginning um, quadrilateral that's kind of the basis, it's the parent of what I was called, call, of all these other ones that we know so well, rectangles and squares. And so what it means in terms of symbols, if angle P is congruent to angle R, so our angles, even though we're in quadrilaterals, now not uh, triangles, we still use the same symbols. So congruent angles still are shown the same way. So P is congruent to R, and Q is congruent to S. We have to have both pairs being congruent. Then PQRS is a parallelogram. All right. So the follow-up, it says write the converse of theorem 6.6 .6 is the converse true or false. How do we know? So converses, we're going to be doing some review. This is the, we switch our hypothesis and our conclusion. Remember, we have an if-then statement. And the converse, we do the then, then the if. So if we do a split screen here and we take a look at what that is. Um, I'm making some of you dizzy here. All right, so let's go take a look. Theorem 6.6, .6, it says if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Well, I'm going to start with my then. So I say if, we're going to go back and do this, if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, so if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, quadrilateral, it is a parallelogram, then, now this is where my if comes in there, my um, hypothesis, then both pairs of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are congruent. Then both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Is it true or false? How do we know? Well, it is true. And the reason
and we know that because we learned that in lesson 6.2, um, I believe. I want to check that. Um, lesson 6.2, that was our very first theorem. So this was our um, first parallelogram theorem. And the book called it 6.2. Like I said, there's nothing special about that number. This is just how our book has organized them. But we know that this is true because um, we started out. That was how we were recognizing them in our last lesson. All right, so now we have to write the converse of 6.7. So the converse of um, theorem 6.7 would be if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, Then both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So is the converse true or false? It's true. And for the same reason, we learned this in Lesson 6.2, and they actually call it Theorem 6.3. So we were learning properties in Lesson 6.2. Um, we learned that opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, we learned that consecutive angles are supplementary. Now what we're going to do is take a look at, okay, what if I don't know that's a parallelogram? If all I know that this is a quadrilateral, how can I go back to a parallelogram? And that's what Lesson 6.3 is. It was taking something that you're not sure what it is, using measurements, using relationships that you see on that quadrilateral, and concluding that it's a parallelogram. All right, so how do we use that? So tell whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, or it's, uh, is, if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, explain. So when I look at A, I see that I've got congruent sides, but those are opposite sides being congruent. And so I'm going to say no, the quadrilateral is not a parallelogram because it has two pairs of congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. All right, opposite means they have to be across. They do not intersect. They do not meet at an end point. All right, if we look at B, what are some things that I notice? Well, I notice 140 and 140, so that means congruent angles, and they are across from each other. If I look at my second pair of angles, I've got 40 and 40. So, yes, I have both pairs of opposite angles being congruent. So, yes, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Now notice, ladies and gentlemen, I start abbreviating, and this is about where your abbreviations should can end at. Um, you need to tell me that they are opposite angles, so I should see opposite angles. I need to know both pairs, and I need to know that they are congruent. So um, notice how my angles are congruent. Um, I need to know that the both pairs of opposite angles. We need to make sure we're getting all of it in there. So write this down the way I wrote it, and use that as you're going through your homework. All right. Now we're going to jump into two more theorems, the last two theorems of this lesson. Um, it says if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary, so once again, this sounds real familiar, to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So what is that going to look like? So what that means, if we take angle P, plus angle Q, and it equals 180 degrees. And then we take angle Q plus angle R, and that equals 180 degrees. So we have to check this angle Y with both P and R. So if both of the consecutive angles add to a given angle, and it equals 180, then it's a parallelogram. 
Now, so uh, theorem 6.9, once again, these are all looking very familiar. We're just, like I said, being able to take um, things that we see and put them into a parallelogram. So the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other. So sorry, I don't have enough room there, guys. So if the diagonals of the quadrilateral bisect each other, and I see that I have that because PM is congruent to MR, that diagonal is cut in half, and QM is congruent to MS, alright? So if QM is congruent to MS, and PM is congruent to MR, this is what it looks like in terms of symbols in the diagram. Then we have a parallelogram. So for the follow-up here, we want to write the converse of theorem 6.8. Is the converse true or false? And how do we know? So theorem 6.8 says, you know, if consecutive angles are supplementary, then it's a parallelogram. So we're going to start with if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram then an angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. So this is true. Once again, yes, this is true. Because we saw this in lesson 6.2. This is one of our, I believe this was the third property we had of parallelograms. And so this was theorem 6.4. And so once again, guys, I just want to reiterate, it's not about memorizing these theorems. It's about recognizing these relationships, knowing to check diagonals to see if they bisect each other. And they both have to be bisected. Checking those consecutive angles are supplementary. So both to the left and to the right of a given angle have to add up to 180. Checking that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Uh, checking that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Doing those looking for those four relationships allows us to show that we do have a parallelogram. So let's take a look at that. So now we're going to use theorem 6.8 and 6.9. So tell whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Explain your reasoning. So if I look at A, I have one pair um, of opposite angles. I don't have another one, so I can't use opposite angles being congruent. But what I can do is I can take this 95 and compare it with the 85. Now I only have to add it one time. So if I look at this, 95 degrees plus 85 degrees does equal 180 degrees. So the answer is yes, because an angle is supplementary to both consecutive angles. And so you can abbreviate, we could abbreviate supplementary and angles in there, but that's what we're looking for. Um, if we take a look at B, I've got 2 and 3 not congruent. And I'm going to need to look at this. 4 and 3 also aren't congruent. And so no, it's not a parallelogram because diagonals do not bisect each other. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of um, where I'm going to stop. Um, you're going to do checkpoints on your own. I might do one of them with you, but I want to stop and explain to you. Um, it seems like throughout the, the, the year, um, when it comes to explaining, you guys struggle with, well, what does it mean to explain? You need to keep example one and example two out while you're doing your assignment here in lesson 6.3. 
because these are the explanations you're going to use. It's either yes, it has this, or no, it doesn't. But you're looking for diagonals bisecting or diagonals not bisecting. You're looking for supplements or you don't have supplements. If you look back at example one, you either have opposite sides um, that are not congruent or opposite sides that are congruent. You have opposite angles that are congruent or opposite angles that are not congruent. But you're going to use one of these four, expl four explanations with your yes and no. So let's take a look at the, um, we've got checkpoints. Um, I've got three given angles, so tell whether or not it's a um, parallelogram. Well, when I look at this, I'm going to look at 60, because 60 is in the middle. And 60 plus 80 equals 140, which is not supplementary, so it's no. Consecutive angles are not supplements. So once again, there's our explain. You've got your explain, your reasoning. Here, if we look at number two, we're looking at diagonals. So you should tell me something about diagonals. Either yes, they are because they bisect, or no, they don't because they do not bisect. Three is sides. So you're either going to tell me opposite sides are congruent with a yes, or no, both pairs of opposite sides are not congruent. And then four gives you angle measurements with congruency marks. So it's either yes, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, or no, both pairs of opposite angles are not congruent. But these are do now on your own. These are do now on your own. Alright, I hope you guys have a great evening and we will see you in class.